Why is the ACC the most overrated conference in college football right now? No, I'm asking you, because to me, this is a plain and obvious fact, but I'm just wondering how we got here. That's Kenton Gibbs, co-host of Locked On ACC, also Locked On Wolfpack, joining me here on the show. Kenton, uh, the reason I'm so down on this conference at the moment, coming into the year, I would have pegged them as the third best conference in college football behind the Big Ten and the SEC. I struggle doing that in light of Virginia Tech losing at Vanderbilt. Yes. NC State, I'm sorry to say this, getting dog walked by yeah. Tennessee. Florida State's complete and utter implosion. I don't think Boston College is for real. I'm not buying that yet. It's year one for Bill O'Brien. They could be okay, but they're not going to finish in the top 25 at the end of the year. Is, is it possible we look up and there are two ranked ACC teams by the end of the season? Because that's kind of the way it feels. Before you answer that question, go to my first one. What's wrong with the conference right now? I mean, I think what's wrong with the conference right now is there's, there's been a series of bad matchups. Like, objectively speaking, there have been a series of matchups that, I mean, Clemson and Georgia, right? You look at, hey, these are the, the conference's top dogs and whatnot. And Clemson's only, I want to say, what, three years removed or so from their last ACC championship. I get it. I get the urge to say, hey, they're still a top dog. They're still going to be one of the better teams in the conference in the country. But we have we, we've seen this story play out before with other teams a head coach that believes I get to tell the game what it is, a head coach that believes I don't need to adjust to the new world, the new world will adjust to me, Ad evolve and adapt or else. And he's not evolving. He's not adapting in terms of Dabo Sweeney. And so you go into an absolute buzzsaw of a Georgia team that does all the things that you're not trying to do at a high level or that you are uh, or that you can't do at a high level, quite frankly, in some regards. You get what you get there. Uh, NC State, Tennessee, Grayson McCall is I, – if I was Coach Doran, if I was uh, the head of, of the Wolfpacks NIL Collective, I'd be patting down my pockets. I'd be going all through the house, you know, the, the box where all the receipts are. I need to find the one for Grayson McCall because I need to return this. I need to – he's defective. I, I don't know what's going on. Grayson you McCall, out on him all, are you out on him already? I, know, I mean, that was a horrible game. But, but, but also, NC State, even if McCall plays well, is not winning that football game. They were dominated in the trenches. And, and here's the thing. I don't disagree with you at all. My problem is this. Grayson McCall has thrown two interceptions on the season. Neither one was more than five yards from the line of scratch. Okay, that's not a great stat. Neither one of the balls were tipped. That both makes it of worse. Those, both of those passes, one was an overthrow, which was on a stick route where it's clearly cover six. Everything about that play screams cover six if you're looking at it pre-snap. You've got a front side corner that is pressed up in terms of the outside corner. You have an inside corner playing about five to seven off, and then you got a safety sitting back. Behind. That's cover six. Look to the weak side of it. You clearly have a corner sitting in cover two. He is about three to four yards away from the line of scrimmage. They're not even disguising it. This is cover six, and yet you're throwing the stick rod as if you have man coverage. Either you misread the coverage or you don't know how to throw a quick out. I don't know which is worse from a six-year quarterback. And then against Tennessee, you throw this one-legged kind of jump ball floater type deal four yards outside of Justin Jolie on a play action pass where the play action worked. Robert and I called a correct play. If you get it to Justin Jolie, the absolute worst that you have there is he gets stopped at the, at the point where he catches it. So he was in the backfield. So, you know, he gets maybe one yard before the Tennessee defender gets to him. Boom. You get third and six. Or or what's even better, you could just All right. So away. you don't like Grayson McCall. I I, I think yeah. I think we I think we, we we've but established that. My, but my, my point here is this. My point here is this. We're looking at individual matchups, but all in all, the ACC is not as bad as people are believing. Just because you saw one of the ACC's top dogs get drunk or alleged top dogs, because let's be honest, when's the last time NC State went to an ACC championship? When's the last time NC State showed up in that conversation? You know, okay. that's my Okay, here's model. where my that's concern true. comes in. Every, every year, you need teams that can elevate themselves from being middle of the pack, getting up to the top, to push for a conference championship. Think Arizona in the Pac-12 last year, Missouri last year in the SEC. You can find examples all over the place. The teams we identified as being capable of doing that are coming up woefully short. 
Virginia Tech losing at Vandy, NC State not close, Clemson one of the top teams is not anywhere close to being one of the top five in college football. They're not even a team. When I listed the issues with the ACC writ large, Kenton, I didn't list Clemson. Because right yeah. now, if you ask me who's going to the ACC title game, Miami and Clemson, those are the two best teams that I've seen. And I don't think Clemson is great. We know they're not on Georgia's level, but that's not a fair standard to hold anybody to. Miami has looked really good. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. I mean, on the exciting front for fans, the, the hunt for the national, t- or not the national title, for the conference title game is wide open. I feel like right. anybody can get there. And then he thought Georgia Tech might be ready to make that leap. And then they go on the road and lose at Syracuse. Maybe Syracuse is ready in Fran Brown's first year. Really hard to win a conference title or push for one seriously in a first season. But th- this is this is why I'm, I'm bashing on the ACC here and, and why I continue to see them as I did all summer as a one-bid conference. I do not see a world in which they become a two-bid league. The only scenario is Miami is 11-1 and or 12-0, and and they lose the conference championship game to whoever they're playing, probably Clemson. But I don't know if anyone but Clemson can actually beat Miami. Okay, a few things here. We're taking very big reactions from the first two weeks of the season. And I want you to do a, a fun exercise for me, Spencer. I mm-hmm. want you to go back and look at mm-hmm. two things for me for the last three to four seasons, okay? Mm-hmm. Normally, I come on here with jokes, but today I'm pulling out my teacher hat. I'm giving okay. you some homework. Okay. Look at the Heisman race and look at the top 25 standings for both for both of those uh, both of those things for the last three, four years. I'm telling you right now, we all like to come up with, ah, this team looked terrible early. They're bad. Ah, this team looked great. Well, the Heisman, the Heisman race is a different conversation. Well, the Heisman is race I'm is saying. a different conversation. But, but the reason that I have these takes right now, Kenton, is this is how you measure yourself against the other conferences. Right. It is not going well. It's not. And I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and be an ACC propagandist and say that it is. I'm not going to do that. But what I will say is this. We are over-indexing and overreacting to some early successes and failures. That's all I'm saying here. I think that we're looking much too deeply into saying your conference is terrible because you had a bad first few weeks. Because again, we we have seen this from other conferences. When the Big 12 lost at every level to the Sun Belt, did we call them the worst conference in all of the Power Five? No, there was still this thought I did. of. They were the worst in all power five last year, but that's easily, but that's the thing. That was not the consensus and everybody did not agree when that was happening. Well, people just aren't able to match my intelligence level all the time. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. All all I'm saying is this. The ACC did not put on a good show. Not going to lie to you and say that they did not going to lie to you and play around and say, Hey, the ACC has looked convincing so far. My only argument is don't give up on this group of teams yet this group of teams again they have not looked special there have been some absolute drubbings in terms of teams that you expect to be top dogs or losses by teams you expect to be dark horses and all that there is still plenty of ball left there is still tons of interconference matchups left there is still plenty of opportunity for teams to show oh wait a minute now you thought that this team was terrible you thought that this team was mid and they actually turned out to be decent but on the flip mm-hmm. side of that, mm-hmm. there is time for Miami to look human or worse, which would make all of the conferences just do a giant, oh, why? What's happening right now? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's 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 a good point. That's a good point. Very, very fair counter there. That's why we why we like bringing you here on the show. Why don't we let the backyard brawl decide the whole thing? Winner <laughs> gets to be the better conference. West Virginia representing the Big 12, carrying the flag, and Pitt representing the ACC. That's Kenton Gibbs representing Locked On ACC and Locked On Wolfpack. Kenton, appreciate it as always, my man. Absolutely. Happy to be here, brother.